My name is Liza Michaud. I'm from Fort Fairfield and I recover loud. Hi, welcome to another episode of Recover Loud. I'm your host, Mike Paddleford, and I recover loud. This show first started with the hopes that we could help end the stigma of substance use disorder and try to help to save some lives. Let's go. I'm on a journey to discover the truth. Living life and recovery is lovely. You got the power in you. Surround yourself with positive energy. Judges hitting people with provocative penalties. Need to make a change. Advocate to change the laws. Prove the people that it's not insane. When you stand behind a cause, I'm here to speak about the pain. Recover loud to normalize the disease that's been killing all my friends and my family. The time is now to let it all go and recover loud. The benefit is healthy people. People, family and friends that never have to overdose ever again never have to plead out to a lesser offense I'm proud to say that I recover loud I never thought I could but I'm so proud that I discovered how to live my life again controlling my own destiny I needed recovery I still need it desperately addiction never defined my identity. I recover loud here to tell my own story I recover proud save a life of like 40 I recover loud yeah I recover loud I recover Loud, yeah, I recover loud. I recover loud. Here to tell my own story. I recover proud. Save a life of like 40. I recover loud. Yeah, I recover loud. I recover loud. Yeah, I recover loud. I recover. 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 I recover loud. Welcome to this season of Recover Loud. Tonight's guest is Liza Michel. Uh, Liza, welcome to the show. Thank you for sharing your story with us. Um, can you tell us a little bit about where you're from? Uh, what it was like growing up for you? Um, I grew up in Arusa County, born and raised in Fort Fairfield. Um, I grew up with one brother. We lived with uh, our mom until I was seven, and then our grandmother raised us um, until I was a teenager. Um, I lived here, grew up here, went to school here. When I turned 18, I left as soon as I could and headed off to college. Um, my life, I would say, was was pretty good. I mean, we had a good family life. Um, we did what we wanted. You know, we didn't go without. So, um, yeah, it was good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, did you graduate from Fort Fairfield? I did. I graduated from Fort Fairfield High School 2007. And what college did you have? Um, so I went to Esther College in Manchester, New Hampshire. Uh, I stayed there for about four years. I got one degree, tried to get a second, and then I ended up dropping out and moving home. <clears throat> yeah. Um, so at some point in there, um, you started using some substances. I did. Um, so at the age of 13, I was prescribed some painkillers. I had a couple of things. I had wisdom teeth out. I had my tonsils out all within a year. So I had three different instances where I was getting prescribed painkillers at a young age. And this was the time they were starting to roll out heavy for doctors to prescribe them to people. And I just happened to be part of that. So that's where it started. I got the painkillers and um, it felt good. So I started abusing them. Did you start abusing right away? Or what so that? maybe after the first or second script, I was like, oh, this is fun. And then a couple of my friends, older friends, were like, oh, you know, you should try to snort it. So we were snorting hydros and biking and stuff like that, at probably by the age of 14. And you said all of your friends were doing it. Were, were most of them your age or most of them older? Uh, most of them were my age, yeah. We only had a couple of older friends. And um, at the time, we were all doing it together. Luckily, most of them, it was just a phase. And uh, one other friend of mine was an addict like me, so luckily most of them didn't go down the path that I went down. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, what was it that um, that you enjoyed about it? What did it do for you? Um, it made me feel numb. You know, made me feel like I didn't, you know, have a care in the world or things didn't matter. Or you could just have fun and relax and you know, go about your day and not worry about school or your drama at home, things like that. And um, I was just gonna ask, uh, what kinds of things did you have to actually worry about at 13? I mean, really, I, being bullied, I was bullied a lot in school um, for being overweight. Um, I was also like a emo into golf stuff when I was younger, so I'd get bullied a lot and um, 
just growing up with my grandmother and my parents weren't really in the picture that was another thing that I got bullied you know bullied for a lot so yeah. that was a big one for me being bullied yeah yeah so you know just trying to fit in and, and you know have fun with your friends exactly have fun and not worry and fit in and try to be cool yeah. I guess cool. <laughs> and um, at what point um, were you using so much that you didn't feel you could stop um, so I went on with the painkillers probably all through high school, and that was pretty normal, like partying, drinking with the pills is when I went to college. Um, I discovered other things, and that's when it kind of, um, I would say, got out of hand. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you said you, you completed one degree. I did, yep. And uh, what degree is that? So I got an associate's in graphic design, so I did that for two years, and then I started on my bachelor's in business when I was in Manchester at Hesser. And um, I only had less than a year left, but I was so bad into my heroin addiction that I just couldn't do it anymore. So I dropped out, moved back to Aroostook County. Yeah. Now, were you doing heroin that first uh, degree that you earned? Um, no. I mean, I just started discovering it, and I wasn't really... It was kind of like a here and there type of thing, not an everyday type of thing. Yeah. 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 So what was it like when you came home, having that addiction already? Um, it was It was rough. So I moved home and I thought that I would try to get sober. Um, so I got on methadone and unfortunately I ended up abusing those um, for a long time, probably two years after that. So I would say that was almost, you know, just as bad, if not worse than the heroin, you know, detox wise and, and things like that. So uh, I tried, but people, places and things, I moved home, my friends were here, the pills were there, so it, yeah. it was easy. Yeah, and um, you know, just to speak on, on methadone as a path to recovery, I mean, these these medications are intended to help. Right. Um, you know, they are abusable. Yeah. Um, but in conjunction with the program, counseling, you know, support, um, people can be successful. Absolutely. Um, a lot of times, you know, people, um, you know, they are successful, but then there's there's those times where people, you know, just can't get away from the addict behavior. Exactly. You know? That mentality. Yeah. Um, so what happened next? You, you left the state for rehab? Um, so then, yep, I was around um, back in here for maybe two years on the methadone, abusing the methadone. Um, and I decided my family sort of had an intervention, um, which I'm thankful for. And they basically sat me down and said that they weren't going to help me anymore if I didn't help myself. So uh, my grandmother lived in Cocoa, Florida. She worked at a rehab. They were willing to take me in. So I just made the decision to just go ahead and do it. I was scared. I went back and forth with it a lot, but I just said, you know what? You need to make a change. So yeah. you know, here's your chance. Yeah. So I did. So um, just to, to touch on, uh, again, the, the time you were on methadone. Yeah. How serious were you about recovery? Uh, I, I probably not very serious. Um, I would go to a couple meetings here and there just to make it look good, like gotcha. to people on the outside. You yeah. know, I'm trying to fool, but in my mind, I wasn't ready to get sober. Yeah. You know, I was still wanted to party. I still like the chaos. I still like running around and chasing people and all that. Yeah. So I wasn't. I wasn't ready. Yeah. So when you went to Florida, you were finally ready. I think I think so. I was ready. I, I was ready. I was gonna be at that yeah. point. Um, so I went to inpatient rehab. I flew down. I spent the night with my grandmother, and directly that next day, they took me for intake. Um, luckily, I didn't have to go to detox, which was nice. Um, they let me come right in. So I ended up staying inpatient rehab for ten months. Um, it was great. The people there were awesome. Um, just the whole routine and the structure worked really well for me in my recovery. Yeah. Um, so I stayed there for 10 months, I got out, and um, I was sober for maybe three months after that. My grandmother passed away up here in Maine, I was stuck in Florida, and um, unfortunately I relapsed um, in Florida. Yeah. Now, um, before you came back to Maine, and while you were still in that inpatient rehab, do you yes. remember what that experience was like, um, as far as what it was that was helping you? Just having a structure, a time set, a routine, you have to get up at 8 o'clock, you need to make your bed by 8.30, you need to go have group breakfast by 9, have a meeting by 10, you know, you go out and work, you have to be home by 5, you have to go to two meetings a week, just basically them telling me what to do right. and when to do it. Yeah. Me not having to think for myself, I think, in that early recovery really helped me a lot. And then all the people and the togetherness, all the different people, 
you know, having to come together, I think was really helped me. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, I think that helped me too, because I know for, for me, I didn't know how to live. Right. You know, it was, you know, get up every morning and get high. Yeah. Um, if I could. Right. Um, and if I was able to get high, it was, you know, what can I do today so that I make sure I'm high tonight? Exactly. You know, um, and, you know, so it was, that was dictating my life. Right. You know, my choices were, how am I going to get high? When am I going to be able to get high? And, you know, what am I going to do to get high? So, um, uh, it was the same for me in rehab. Um, you know, having the ability to learn how, how to live each day. Exactly. You know, and um, understanding that the chaos isn't really what, you know, we need for, for normal living, you know. Uh, I found out, you know, later on in, in my recovery that, you know, so-called normal living, it, it's somewhat boring, you know. Um, it is. You know, sitting at home, having dinner with the family, watching TV, you know, giving the kids baths, whatever it is, um, and going to bed. Yeah. You know, we don't need to stay up until 2 in the morning. Exactly. Uh, we don't need to, you know, be exciting right up until the time we go to bed, you know. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm glad you, you touched on that because, you know, that was something that really helped me, just knowing, you know, what to do each day. Exactly, what you have to do or what you're expected to do. Yeah. That's to be a, you know, functioning human. That's right, <laughs> yeah. right, right. And, and before that, I know I was a functioning addict. Yeah, exactly, you know, same. Um, you know, and uh, a lot of the times I, I thought that uh, I'd hid it from people. Um, you know, when I did get a job, uh, of course, nobody suspected I was, I was, you know, going to the bathroom and, and uh, abusing medications. Right. Um, but, you know, just in the end, I found out, you know, I really wasn't hiding it, you know, because the weight loss, the, you know, the, the eyes, it, it, there were so many things, so many tells that people just didn't talk about, you know. Um, but in the end, you know, basically I wasn't, I wasn't fooling anybody. Right, by yourself. Right. <laughs>
Yeah. Um, so had you ever been homeless before? Um, I had at one point in New Hampshire, but just briefly. It wasn't for any period of time, um, like it wasn't in, in Florida. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how about incarceration? Did you get arrested? I at all? did. So at the end, um, the end of that two years, the last three months of my using, I got arrested three times in those three months. Um, I got arrested with fentanyl. Um, I got a couple of felonies. I got distribution, um, possession, and then I got um, grand theft, petty theft. So I ended up staying the third time. They wouldn't let me out. So I stayed incarcerated for a year, um, which saved my life. That was the best thing that could have ever happened to me. So um, it was great. Now, now, had you received treatment while you were in? Or just so they didn't they don't offer that in Florida they don't offer any help for addicts um, it's basically just good luck to you and hopefully you are okay through your detox and your sobriety yeah, yeah so it, it was rough um, that sticks in my mind that detox in solitary confinement um, I detox for almost 30 days I didn't sleep I was sick it was terrible and I will never it is literally burned into my brain yeah. and I never want to feel like that again yeah yeah and is, is that helping you to stay away from absolutely that um that's always lingering in the back of my mind like I don't want to go through that again it was terrible probably the worst thing um, that I ever did go through yeah and see I remember when I was using it was that fear of the detox exactly. that kept me using yep you know um, because when I was sick it did it felt like death yeah it, um, it, it, terrible yeah um, so thankfully got through that um, yes you know and now see it, here in Maine we have you know uh, we're a lot more progressive in, in our laws um, with use when uh, people go to jail here uh, they can get on MAT um, they are offered programs and go to meetings um, and I'm noticing you know uh, through TikTok and Facebook and some of the other platforms that the rest of the country is pretty far behind yeah. Um, you know, and Florida is actually one of the furthest behind that I'm, I'm seeing. Um, so hopefully some of the advocates out there can, can help push some of these laws that are, you know, that we found here in Maine that helped, um, you know, helped us to, to find uh, recovery and to actually um, feel like we mattered. Right. Um, you know, being locked up and thrown in there saying good luck, um, you know, that, that doesn't feel... Um, you feel like a piece of garbage. I mean, yeah. really. The punitive system is is uh, you know put there for a reason, but it, you know if we can't learn how to live um, when we get back out on the streets, um, it, it's just going to put us back in. Exactly. And um, you know it's it's just a, a system that we get caught up in, and it it doesn't do us any benefit. Uh, it doesn't do the society benefit because they're still paying for us, um, you know, to be locked up. And you know if we can learn how to live without using, then, you know, maybe we have a chance of contributing to society. Absolutely. Um, so, when you were homeless in Florida, um, you know, what did that look like? Um, it basically, uh, sleeping, uh, there's a, I mean, it's warm down there, so there's a lot of places outside to stay. There's a lot of homeless people, a lot of camps, so it's staying with friends or staying on a couch or staying in someone's car or staying outside my friend's house out in their lawn or, you know, at really anywhere that somebody would even let me come and sleep in my car in their driveway or anything like that. You know what I mean? It's just, every day was different. So where am I going to stay today, or where am I going to go today? Right, right. So it's, it's chaotic. Right. So when you when you're looking at that, and how am I going to get high today? It's uh, uh exactly. You know, and um, you know, you did mention that uh, one of your charges was furnishing. Yes. Um. So you know, you did what you had to do to make money so that you could provide for yourself. Right. Um. And a lot of times, even when we do that, we're not providing ourselves with enough so that we can get an apartment and do this. Um, because everything ends up going just uh, enough to get get yourself by yeah yeah um, and prison um, yes. you know saved you it um, did it was the best thing that I think could have ever happened to me I, I didn't see it like that in the beginning I because I was afraid of detox right. I mean like us all and um, I just wanted to get out and I was nervous I had been arrested twice before but I'd never spent any time more than a day or two in jail I'm from Maine I'm in Florida yeah. you know I was nervous and um, 
you know, ended up being the best thing that ever happened to me. I, I trained um, service dogs with a program called Paws and Stripes. And my boss there, Miss Faye, she actually, um, she helped me transform my life and she taught me things um, that I still use today, Im implemented in my everyday life. You know, she helped me, I would say, grow up. Yeah, and um, you know, it, it's funny that that was a program that you got into. Uh, last, in the first season, I interviewed uh, Tyler from Holton um, and he's, he's still training dogs today. Um, that's awesome. And runs Purpose Pups. Um, I did see that recently, that's awesome. Yeah, and uh, you know, they started a program here in Maine where, uh, in Arusta County, where they're going to be bringing a service dog into the courthouse. I'm glad um, to hear that. Yeah, to be support for, you know, some, some children or some of the, uh, you know, someone who struggles with mental health disorders. Um, you know, so th there's a lot of good work that, that people are doing still uh, now in recovery. Had we been thrown away, um, you know, we wouldn't be out here trying to affect change and helping those those that are still struggling. Right. You know. Um, so, what is it you do today to uh, you know keep your your path of recovery going? Um, so, I um, I'm really in tune with my higher power. Um, very spiritual. That's a big part of my recovery today. Um, I would say that's probably the biggest part of my recovery is spirituality. Um, I also, you know, I keep myself busy, I work, um, I spend a lot of time with my family, I have a few close friends that I spend time with, I work out, um, I just always try to do new things or things, I step outside of my comfort zone a lot and try to do things that I'm uncomfortable with. In the end, I'm usually happy with the results that I, I did it, so. This season of Recover Loud is presented by Recovery on the Road, a Facebook group providing recovery support and resources to anyone, anywhere, at any time throughout the day. If you or someone you know is struggling, please connect to Recovery on the Road on Facebook. Recovery on the Road has been offering in-person meetings here at 46 Sweden Street in Caribou. If you're in the area, please stop by, grab a calendar, and come attend one of the meetings. We believe that connection is the opposite of addiction. If I could say anything to the addict or alcoholic that is still suffering out there tonight, um, I would say that there is hope for you. No matter how far gone you think you are, how dark your path may seem, you can get help and you can get better. If I can do it, trust me, you can do it. And you should talk about it. Get help, talk about it, don't be ashamed. You know, there's more people than you think struggle with these things so if you talk about it you can relate to people so seek help talk about it get better recover loud let's go I'm on a journey to discover the truth Living life and recovery is lovely You got the power in you Surround yourself with positive energy Judges hitting people with provocative penalties Need to make a change Advocate to change the laws Prove the people that it's not insane When you stand behind a cause I'm here to speak about the pain Recover loud to normalize the disease That's been killing all my friends And my family The time is now to let it all go and Recover loud The benefit is healthy people Family and friends that never have to overdose ever again never have to plead out to a lesser offense i'm proud to say that i recover loud i never thought i could but i'm so proud that i discovered how to live my life again controlling my own destiny i needed recovery i still need it desperately addiction never defined my identity. i recover loud here to tell my own story i recover proud save a life of like 40 i recover loud yeah i recover loud i recover loud yeah I recover thou, I recover thou, here to tell my own story I recover proud, save a life